Pastor Robinson, so you have been at Grand Concourse for nine years, and you would have contributed by God's help significantly to that church. But recently, there was a video circulating with a statement you made uh, relating to a rape or some other sort of marital right? rape. Marital right. rape. And people, international media had it, local media had it in the newspapers. I think a lot of people have wanted to talk to you about it to get explanation. And we are happy that NJC Online Church is a place where you can explain. Pastor Robinson, I was saying in my mind, knowing you, having known you, I was saying in my mind, no man, this is what I, I think Pastor Robinson means. And it was difficult, but that was a rough statement, Pastor. Um, tell us what happened. Wives, you must submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. And in this matter of submission, I want you to know up front, ladies, that once you get married, you are no longer your own. You are your husband's. You understand what I'm saying, Claudia? And I, I, I emphasize that because I saw in court the other day on TV where a lady sued her husband for rape. And I would say to you gentlemen, the best person to rape is your wife. But then now it has become legalized, rape. I don't understand how you belong to somebody and they are all right. Oh, well, thanks for the opportunity to share that because you know me. Yes. And those who really know me that know that that is very uncharacteristic of me. That's what I was I didn't want to say yeah. it that way, but you say, yeah. I was saying, this is yeah. uncharacteristic of you. Uh, yeah. My, my life has been woven around women mm -hmm. and I have high, high reverence for women. Okay. However, even in the church, you know the devil attends church. Yes. And I was, I did for the month, the year, the entire year of 2021, mm -hmm. I preached from the book of Ephesians. Okay. The entire year. And on that Sabbath in question, I was preaching on God's love for the church, demonstrated through human relationship, especially through marriage. Okay. And I, I made the point in my sermon that um, women, women must submit themselves to their husband as unto the Lord in the same manner as the church is. is the same manner of how God loves the church and gave him, himself for it. Yes. And I told a story about a, a, a show I was watching on TV mm -hmm. where this man was on trial for raping his wife. Right. And in the service, well, she wasn't even in the service. There is a group in the church that I call the Gang of Five. Okay. That they are very malicious. Uh, they, they consider themselves to be a part of a modern movement. Okay. Uh, they, they align themselves with a group called Adventists for Justice. Mm -hmm. And they align themselves with the Me Too movement. Okay.
So in my preaching that day, they took this one minute and 23 second clip. These are five members five, of the church. Yes. Five, five female members. Female members. And I learned something along my journey, Pastor, that hurt people hurt other people. Hurt other people. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they, they seem not to have been too fond of me. Okay. And they use this opportunity to seek to bring me to scrutiny. So when they said, when they published what they published, mm -hmm. they did not publish the precedence nor okay. the antecedent. So the context wasn't there, you're saying? My message was for 58 minutes. Mm -hmm. And everything in that message was empowering of women. I want you to know up front, ladies, that once you get married, you are no longer your own. I, I, I spoke to men to let them know that headship is leadership, not bossship. Mm -hmm. And I carry that theme throughout the entire sermon. And I would say to you gentlemen, the best person to rape is your wife. But then now it has become legalized, rape. And they took down the sermon of the, the media and put up that little clip there, sent it to other feminist movements, and it went around the globe that I became the poster boy of the Adventist church. Mm. You, you, you will notice here, I, I, I made no verbal defense, neither written defense of it, because sometimes you have to let some fire burn itself out and leave mm -hmm. ash. Mm -hmm. And so these feminist groups, they really pump it up. And those who did not have context. Okay. Now, now that some people have gotten context, their, their response is different. Now, I want my viewers to know that this was not a reaction of my church. My church has been very supportive of my ministry and were very blessed by that sermon. As a matter of fact, there are multitudes of them who have told me how blessed they were, male and female, mm -hmm. by hearing what Paul's thesis was. So they, be, they came into a furor, and I retreated. Okay. Uh, I, I, I thought that, you know, there are some battles you don't fight. Mm -hmm. There are some wars you don't engage in. So I, I, I said nothing about it. Let it. I retreated. I just left them to go on. After a few weeks, it became history. Mm -hmm. But it was injurious. It was injurious. It would have been injurious. My, my phone went off the hooks. People were calling Robinson. What, what, where, what did you really have in mind? Where were you going? Why, why would you say that? I think that? I called you too and didn't get that. So I just, I, I said. You did. You're perhaps re just receiving so many calls. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so. I decided, Pastor, it was my plan previously. Mm -hmm. The next year, September, my conference would be having conference session. Okay. It was my plan then to retire. Okay, so you have previously planned to retire in September. In September. About the time of the conference session. Right. So when this happened, I said, you know something? At this stage of my life and my ministry, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, must, I must put this in. That when this thing began to make the rounds, it caused my conference administration to panic. They began to panic. You think your conference administration, you, you, are you telling the president of a conference that the conference I, administration panicked? They panicked. Okay. <laughs> and pondered. And pondered. Because sometimes in saying nothing, you say a lot. And I did not get the defense of any of them. So I decided to take my own 
preemptive strike. Okay. And so, midnight, December 31, I went into retirement. Okay. So, I'm now a retired pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You ask me, what do I do next? I'm glad you asked. From, from, my, own, from, from my own feelings, mm -hmm. having completed 44 years in this church, I think my legacy uh, must be positive. And so having retired, I will use whatever energy and skills and ideas and suggestions I have to go into social services <laughs> that's Expand. a broad I, I work voluntarily okay. wherever I am asked okay. to work whatever I can do to advance this church I want to leave this church better mm. not bitter Amen. I want to I leave love it that. Yes. I love that say it again pastor I want to leave this church better not, not bitter. bitter. I want to leave as a victor and not a victim. Not a victim. So wherever I can be of use, especially in academia, counseling, uh, chaplaincy, whatever. So when, when these ladies took this clip to try to demean me, they were putting themselves as pawns in the hand of Satan to hurt me and to hurt the church. Okay. Because you, I can't separate myself from the church. No, because the, the media picked it up here, I can tell you. And perhaps the media will be, will be um, extracting excerpts from this. The local media may be extracting I excerpts. I hope they put it in perspective. Yes. Can you please maybe speak to, to the possibility of the media picking this up and saying, Pastor Robinson, we hear all that you are saying, but the fact is you said that it, it, you gave the impression that rape was fine if you are married. So that is what you said. So that's what you want to deal with. And I, did not, and I did not say that. Yes. And I would not say that. And I would say to you, gentlemen, the best person to rape is your wife. But then now it has become legalized. Rape. No man has the, has, has the right mm -hmm. to rape Neither his wife or anybody. Or anybody else. Rape is a crime. Mm -hmm. It's criminal. And yes, a man can rape his wife because sex must be mutual consent. Yes. So if she's not in the mood, wait till she is in the mood. Well, that is clear. And You're if she says that? no, it's no. Let it be no. Yeah. And I believe that with all my heart. I believe in conjugality yes. and mutuality. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm sure you know, that, that would have been cleared up. I think after 44 years, I have a story that I can share. You would. I, I think I can, I can pass involuntary counsel on to mm -hmm. up and coming pastors and I always say in the words of an old song if I have wounded any soul or caused one foot to go astray dear Lord forgive but over and everything else I, I when I go around and see people that tell me that I marry them that I baptize them mm -hmm. I bless their children yes. I bury their family yes. members I, I, I thank God that little, little Burnett from Hopewell could have risen to the place 
where I could create ripples in a stream. Little Burnett, who passed out in Duncan's district, where I, my, my membership still is. Your membership, still, yes, sir. <laughs>